Did you know that until the end of the 19th century, there generally was not a distinction between left and right shoes? Are these stride shoes? could be worn on either foot. It wasn't until the early 20th century that shoes specifically designed for the left and right feet began to be widely used. This was a significant breakthrough in the footwear industry, making shoes more comfortable and anatomically appropriate. In my world of doll making, I certainly see the distinction after all. In the doll world, everything is just like with humans, only smaller. And modern people do appreciate nuances. The dolls in my current series boast Victorian style boots, each with its own unique details. The key to good doll shoes – a well-crafted last. I sculpt this specifically for my collection to match the shape of my doll's feet. I aim to make interchangeable shoes so the dolls can swap with each other. Then I create the patterns. In the end, I make shoes following all the rules of the most exquisite shoemakers. It's all like real life, just in miniature. And because the doll is small, I reduced the thickness of the laser. And everything, absolutely everything, I stitch by hand. A sewing machine just cannot handle the size of the work. I often age the material to give it a sense of having been worn. It makes the doll look more alive. Keep an eye out of my special webinar and masterclass on doll shoemaking. It will be a real step into the tiny world of high fashion. For my new doll Nina, others her stage name meaning doll in Catalan. Our uh, real name is anyone guess. I'm crafting some snazzy tanga boots. She lives in Publisec, a hotspot of theaters, cabarets, and all the jazz, or should I say burlesque. I'll give you the lowdown on her neighborhood and her theme song later, but now let's keep into world of the Tenga Boots. The Tenga Boots saga is as spicy as dance itself. Born in the late 19th century in the La Plata River areas in Argentina and Uruguay, Tenga got its groove in the working class and immigrant quarters of Buenos Aires, where cultural and musical melting pots bubbled away. Much like my own neighborhood, full of Uruguayan and Argentine bodies. Initially, tango dancers just stuffed in regular shoes, but as the dancers' fancy footwork, quick spins and intense partner dynamics involved, the need for specialized footwear became as clear as a well-turned bandanen. Enter the tango boots designed to offer maximum comfort, support and flexibility for all those dramatic tango moves. Over the 20th century, these boots involves becoming more sophisticated and tailored to the tango's rhythm and style. And today, here I am, influenced by tango culture, mixing techno beats and stitching boots for dolls. By the way, I know the couple in Russia who have turned making doll shoes into their bread and butter. Yes, you had it right, doll shoes. For those curious who can check out the Instagram account, it's quite something to see how people can make a living and uh, thrive on such unique pursuits. From tiny laces to miniature soles, they are proof that in um, this big world, even the smallest thing can make a huge difference, at least in those fashion world. It just goes to show that there is no limit to what you can do for, for a living, as long as it fits, even it's for a doll's foot. A doll is truly a masterpiece of details. Every tiny bit adds to its character. I have mentioned before that my Carmen turned out to be quite the diva. Or maybe, just maybe, I raised her to be that way. I am on tight schedule to create a bunch of dolls, 
and I am really rushing it. But let me tell you, dolls and haste are no go. I've already redone her bodies, but Carmen's still throwing a fit. She is demanding new shoes, stockings ahead, and hair still redo. Talk about high maintenance, she is a true lady. In my haste, I messed up the proportions of her clothes a bit. But I'm spotting my blunders, I see where I need to cut, trim and sew to make the proportions more human-like. I'll show you the results soon. In the world of dolls, even a millimeter matters. And Carmen, like a true fashionista, won't let me forget it. I just had my first webinar at my new gig teaching English to Londoners, because, you know, they kind to invent it the language. I kept the advertising for my debut stream on the Hush Hush. If I was going to make a fool of myself, let's at least keep it cozy. Good thing I had some UK knowledge up my sleeve from my days in a pretty decent humanities high school. We were drilled on the locations of the Trafalgar Square, Buckingham Palace and Westminster Abbey, practically the ABC of British geography. Every Soviet school kid had to visit Moscow's Red Square at least once. It was like a rite of passage akin to devout Muslim making a pilgrimage to Mecca. Our English teachers, with almost the same fever, would regale us with tales of Big Ben and Thames. But they probably never had snowballs a chance in the Sahara of stepping outside the USSR. This led a whole lot of language mix-ups and a treasure trove of jokes about them. And given that I was born in a super-secret nuclear city, I bet my first English teachers might have gone their whole lives without ever encountering the native English speaker. My philosophy? Life's the best teacher. I have got a ton of experience streaming in Russian, but this time it was like a blast from the past. I had everything planned out. But as soon as the camera turned on, my brain decided to take a quick vacation. It was a nightmare until my cat, sensing my panic, decided it was a playtime and started jumping on me. It broke the tension and everything became easier. But that easier was is a scene of the past. This time, everything that could go wrong did. First, our camera quit on us, forcing me to broadcast via my laptop's fisheye lens. Then, we messed up the time difference between Barcelona and London. Mid-webinar, I lost my speech text, which was not exactly calming. And finally, we realized the sound was only coming through the one channel. It was a total disco disaster. Despite it all, the webinar was a hit. The audience was hooked for one and a half hours, firing away questions. The feedback was glowing. We ruffled off one of my courses and the winner was happy. I am already excited for the next one to be even better. Meanwhile, keep those questions coming. The answers are sure to be interesting not just for you, but for everyone, I am here to share knowledge, after all. True to form halfway through my journey, I decided to map out the path. To do this, I set out the gauge interest in my topic worldwide. Let's take a peek at Google's country analysts with a scale from 0 to 100. A score of 100 means you Tom was uh, the star in that spot dominating searches. A 50 is like being halfway famous there. A zero, it's like you Tom never excited in this area. No data at all. But remember, it's about the search terms share of the spotlight, not the number of searches. If we look at web queries, uh, the top spots are uh, Eastern countries with big economies. South Korea leads by uh, a mile, 
followed by Taiwan, then Hong Kong, China, and Japan, then company. But switch to YouTube and uh, you will also find Finns, Russians, and Americans. Seems like uh, our business is more fun on snow winter evenings in countries with snow. Rounding out the chart of countries, showing any interest in ball jointed dolls in my beloved Iran. Let's wish this country breath of freedom, especially for its women. And let's also hope the freedom in Russia and Belarus, where I have many dual artist acquaintances. I have mentioned before that uh, in uh, countries once ruled by communists, there is a high level of craftsmanship due to the decline the light industry. People were busy with anything but what they needed themselves. If we now just enter doll, the stats are put our super successful Asian countries ahead of Iran, Cuba, and Nicaragua. Apparently, mothers uh, there still uh, often make toys for their kids by hand. There is something both said and heard a woman about it. Honestly, the Russian speaking doll market welcomed me warmly until a split happened. I'll tell you, in an on secret, switching to English is a big change and a bit nerve wracking for me. But hey, it keeps me young at heart. So, comment and uh, hit like if you get me your feedback, it's super important. I'm also doubling in digital art these days. Uh, the line between analog and digital art is blurring faster than a speeding paintbrush. I mean, even in making wooden dolls, we are using teach that could probably send a rocket to Mars. I have been promising you a Patreon for ages, but I didn't want to just take your money without giving something cool in return. So, an intriguing idea hit me. I'll create a comic about a doll who finds herself in uh, the antique shop in downtown Barcelona. The story will unfold like a TV series in shorts and reels. Those who want to support me will get access to a Telegram chat where we will collectively brainstorm the plot with me, the subscribers, and even Carmen the doll who are currently programming. There is shaping up to be a widely mesmerizing experience. First, I sculpted the doll and her character emerged. Then, a musician Roda named her and added some flair. And soon, uh, thanks to potential GPT-powered chat personalization, we will have a full-on digital persona. Chatting with us, sharing interest uh, traits and quirks in a general doll lovers chat. Let's see what comes out of this. Over the years, I have had many chats where people talked to dolls sometimes, not even needed my input, everyone's just itching to show off their creations, to display their work and admire others. I want to harness the unfiring power of dolls and create a chat for patrons, for those who want to dive into this art experiment. They turn for news on this collective creativity invention. Welcome to the Handy Tips section. Today's topic around elastic bands for BGD. Ideally, uh, you would use the special BGD elastic. It's tighter if you can find it. But remember, these are typically designed for smallest dolls, and all elastic tend to stretch over time. Here is how to give your elastic some extra oof. The loops at the ends. Secure one end to a handle and the other to a stationary hook. Start twisting counterclockwise. Keep the tension even along the elastic to avoid any knots. When you feel the maximum tension, Fold the elastic in half, remove the handle, and tie the second end's loop to the hook. Thread the handle through the loop created by the tool keep it taut. Start twisting clockwise. 
are evenly distributing the tension. The handle will begin to spin on its own, but it's crucial to twist it uh, as tightly as possible till the end. Don't forget that uh, twisting shortens the length. The result, a super strong elastic that not only lasts longer, but can also be used for larger dolls, uh, say bigger than 40 centimeters. It's like giving your dolls elastic a bodybuilding course bulked up and ready for action. I'll try to post some updates on my wooden doll next week. We are assembling the prototype and making sure everything moves and uh, locks in place like a well-oiled machine. Also get ready for a holiday realize featuring the musical theme of my new doll Nina. Plus, I have got heaps of personal stories to share. Feel free to drop your questions or thoughts in the comments. Smash that like button. I must know that I'm on the right track. Navigating through the thrilling world of doll making with your support. Stay tuned for more doll adventures. It's going to be a whimsical ride.